KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, April 16th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a, a decent Monday. Uh, the cloud cover helped, I think, for as far as the heat, but I think things are going to heat up later this week. They really are. And just off camera to our right, Patty Santos, who is joining us on the morning shift now. We didn't get to see her yesterday. She was doing a bunch of homework and getting stuff ready for the rest of the week. So, Patty, we're going to see you in just a second. We're yes, very happy you're here. Welcome, Patty. All right. Mike Ostray just standing by with Why questions. Don't we get in this shot, Patty. Here. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> here she comes. Here, here she, she comes. comes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is it now the morning shows. Patty Santos. Woo! Okay, that's okay. Good morning. Wait. Good morning. <laughs> okay. No, go away. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> Silly. Here, here. You can see. Look at that. 72 degrees right now. Two point stands at 67. A lot of humidity out there. It was so humid yesterday. Yes. Yeah. It's and just the, the taste. Are you not a humid fan? Oh well, I'm here. Guess what? I live in Texas. I know it's going to stay humid for the next few days. She's like, can I go now? I know. 86 for a high temperature today. Oh, wait. No, no I'm kidding. Uh, 86 high temperature today. So well above normal like we are right now. Once again, we're 10, almost 15 degrees above normal this morning. And the aquifer, uh, big hit yesterday, down six tenths of a foot. Mold moderate oak, which did come down from the previous day's reading. So we're definitely on the downward slide from the, uh, the peak of the oak season. Got a couple leftover showers around the area right now. Just one or two two of them up there to the uh, north as you can see just those few little stragglers going by uh, Kerrville heading in toward Fredericksburg there are some more well off to the northeast over there by College Station but these are going to continue if they haven't already just to sort of uh, fade away die down throughout the course of the morning and we do have some fog in places though up there in Kerrville two and a half miles visibility but elsewhere there's not a lot now we've got obviously very warm temperatures we've got a ton of humidity out there However, now Kerrville doesn't have much wind, neither does uh, Comfort, but we've got nine mile per hour wind here in town, 12 there at Randolph, so that breeze is helping to prevent a lot of the fog from forming up. Should the wind slacken off where you are, you want to watch for some of that fog to pop up in the next couple of hours. Hot, humid today and tomorrow. There could be a stray little sprinkle trying to pop up again just because there's so much humidity, and that's going to be tomorrow. Then we get into Fiesta on Thursday. 90, that's going to be the hottest day of the forecast and just very, very humid out there. A couple of storms are going to be possible. The odds of rain are not that great, but if something does pop, could be strong. It right now is looking like that would be later on Thursday night after all of the Fiesta Fiesta activities are done. Then uh, as far as the weekend is concerned, Friday, a lot like Thursday, lesser chances for rain. Best chance of rain, though, is going to be on Saturday. We have that front moving on through here, and that's going to provide beautiful weather for then Sunday. It's going to be great out there and that's going to extend as looking right now into Monday. So for the river parade might actually be on slightly on the coolish side once the sun goes down on Monday evening. More on the weekend forecast and look ahead to the first day of Fiesta coming up in just a couple of minutes. The birthday boy is back RJ. Hope you had a good birthday. I did. Good. Yes, I'm still in uh, celebration mode a little bit and stuff. Still trying to get used to getting back into the morning schedule. But thank you very much to everyone out there for the birthday shout outs. I really appreciate all that on social media and everyone who uh, obviously reached out this weekend. So appreciate everyone out there. All right, let's get you on the roads ready to go here. 281, the quarry traffic looking pretty good out there right now. 281, Loop 410, same situation as well. Let's show you. We do have a major crash right now being reported. I-10 eastbound and Loop 410. This is going to be in the east side of town. You see that traffic are Already starting to build for all of our folks coming in from 410 on northbound lanes that are going to get onto I-10 right there, right there at Ackerman Road and Foster Road. We'll, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. We have some ongoing construction taking place here, 90 eastbound at 36th Street out there for our folks on the west side of town. But uh, last check, it looked like they were starting to clear things out in that area. So that's good news for all of our folks there that are driving on the west side right now, maybe making their way out to uh, Lackland Air Force Base to start their Tuesday morning. Everything else looking pretty good across the city. We got ongoing construction there still in the Live Oak area that's supposed to wrap up around this time or so. But again, something we will monitor as we make our way through the five o'clock hour. And again, everything looking pretty good with the exception of that one crash out there. The east side we will give you more details on that coming up here in just a bit. Mark and Stephanie back to you guys. RJ, thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man was shot during a disturbance late last night. And it happened in the 5300 block of Hilburn Drive on the southwest side, not far from Pearsall Park. Police tell us they don't have much to go on right now in this case. They told us the shooting suspect ran away from the scene. The man who was shot was taken to the hospital. No other injuries were reported. 
This morning, the San Antonio police chief will tell us how his plan to reduce crime is going. Chief William McManus is set to brief the city council's public safety committee at 1030 this morning. Just this weekend, two teenagers were shot and killed in an east side shooting. Our Patty Santos is live with us this morning with more on what the community members are, whether they're not seeing any changes or not. Good morning. Patty. Yeah, good morning. About a year ago, SAPD partnered up with UTSA criminology and criminal justice professor to form a violent crime prevention plan. Now, part of the strategy uh, was to implement hotspot policing, which basically boils down to officers in cars and areas with high crimes in their with emergency lights flashing for about 15 minutes. Later today, we're going to find out how that plan is working. Well, I talked to a community member who's been very involved in trying to steer youth away from gangs and drugs. And he tells me, realistically, when the police or the district attorney talk about lower crime numbers, it really does little to console families who've lost someone to gun violence. Charles Satterwhite is a creator of a nonprofit, San Antonio Rising Stars. He lost his son to gun violence two years ago. He knows cities are trying, but he says the pain of a loss is more than a number. I don't go by statistics because I hate to hear that mother cry, that yell, that scream from within, it breaks you. And then even myself, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how do I come from my wife? You know, she don't want to hear about no statistics, you know, she just want to see results. Now coming up in the next hour, we're going to tell you what he says would make a difference in stopping the violence. That's coming up at six. Thank you, Patty. At Canyon Lake, rescue crews are looking for a teenager who fell off a tube. So this is 19-year-old Royner Alejandro Rojas Videra. According to the Comal County Sheriff's Office, Videra was floating on a tube in this area when he drifted towards the water intake near the Canyon Lake Dam. Now, this happened on Sunday evening. The Comal County Sheriff also tells us that 19-year-old went underwater and did not resurface. A family friend says Rivera did not know how to swim, and by the time they saw him fall out of the tube, it was too late. We hear, like, we hear him screaming. He's like, help me. He's screaming in Spanish, help me, and, like, waving his arms. And then he goes underwater, and, like, we can't see him anymore. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says a lot of visitors go to the area, but it's not for swimming since there are no lifeguards. It's been one year since a 22-year-old UIW student was killed in Selma. Now, police and crime stoppers are asking for your help finding the suspect. Joseph Benales was killed around 11.45 p.m. in the 15,000 block of I-35 near the Forum Shopping Center. Selma police say someone shot Benales while he was driving. His family believes it was a road rage incident. Police say the suspect's vehicle was a dark-colored sports car with a loud exhaust. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You can remain anonymous. This morning, Israel's war cabinet is deciding its next move days after Iran launched more than 300 drones and missiles. As ABC's Perry Russell reports, the Israel Defense Forces say they stopped 99% of the attack with the help of the U.S. and other countries. This morning, the U.S. and other world leaders urging Israel to de-escalate the conflict in the Middle East, with the White House saying if Israel decides to strike back against Iran, it will do so without the help of the U.S. military. We are not involved in their decision-making process about a potential response. Israel Defense Forces Chief of Staff with this warning. Iran will face the consequences for its actions. It's not clear what options Israel is considering. The International Atomic Energy Agency has concerns about a possible strike on Iran's nuclear facilities. We uh, uh, always um, call for extreme restraint. This comes as the White House says Iran did not give the U.S. warnings about the time frame of its attack to limit potential damage. Iran's intent was clearly to cause significant destruction and casualties. The White House now urging Congress to pass the national security bill that would in part provide funding for Israel's defense as well as give money to Ukraine. That bill has been held up in the House by Speaker Mike Johnson, who now says he wants to break up the single bill into separate votes. We will vote on the Israel aid, uh, on the uh, aid to Ukraine, on the aid to the Indo-Pacific, and then another measure that has our national security priorities uh, included, and that has some of the things with regard to the uh, loan lease uh, option. Johnson says he expects all the voting to be done this week. The White House is against the idea of breaking up this bill, but at the same time, they say they want funding approved quickly. Perry Russom, ABC News, Washington.
So we are now officially just days away from the start of the Fiesta season. We are counting down to the first official Fiesta event, which is Fiesta Fiesta. That's happening Thursday at 4 p.m. at the Alamo Domes HEB Plaza. Now, KSAP Medal Days are back. You can grab a free KSAP Fiesta Medal at various locations around San Antonio. We have a new location for you to visit this morning, and we will reveal that location coming up a little later in this newscast. KSAT actually has five different medals for you to collect, one for, including one for Texas Eats, SA Live, and more. Check out this story on KSAT.com for more details on which ones and the dates where you can get yours for free. And in time now, it's 510 and 72 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, how Apple just lost its top phone maker spot to Samsung. Also next, how a family of a nine-year-old boy quickly learned that having an octopus as a pet can be quite an armful or eight. Or eight. <laughs> Outside with live cam. Boy, it feels like early summer out there this morning. Muggy and 72 degrees. We're having very warm afternoons. Is it going to cool down in the near future at all? Mike Ostrage says, yeah, it actually is. Hi, welcome back. It's 514. So a nine-year-old boy's pet octopus suddenly became more than this Oklahoma family could handle. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a parent just trying to make his kid happy. We're going to build an octopus thing? Thank you so much. Cameron Clifford from Edmond, Oklahoma, surprising his nine-year-old son Cal with a mail-order California two-spot octopus, a creature Cal has always been fascinated by. I've just loved them since I was two because they're the closest things to aliens and they're just so cool. But they quickly learned having an octopus as a pet was a lot harder than it seemed. We kind of estimated there were about between 40 and 70 eggs but every one that hatched that I saw, I was able to catch and contain, and, I, and it was exactly 50. So what's next for the Octo Mom and her family, both aquatic and human? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Octo Mom. Yes, yes, yes we remember <laughs> yes, that. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay, 515, 72 degrees. Up next, a first look at some new gaming furniture from Ikea. And checking trans sky, right? Did you know that apparently we all out here in North America have been saying Ikea wrong? Apparently it's Ikea or what? something like that. Oh no. But we're not changing it. We're not changing no, it. I just no, want you sorry. to know that, that we, <laughs> we may be wrong. I want you to head into your Tuesday with doubt. Uh, let's oh, look no. at Highway 90 at Medio Creek. Things are looking good. Be right back. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Because there's a right Let's way to... Stop! And the speed limit definitely isn't... 700 million miles per hour. So why would you pay a rate based on... A terrible boss with a terrible haircut! Save with... Ooh. Save with DriveWise and get a rate based on you. You're in good hands with Allstate. Flonase, allergies don't have to be scary. Spraying Flonase daily gives you long-lasting, non-drowsy relief. Psst, psst. Flonase, all good. Also, try our allergy headache and nighttime pills. The NFL Draft. You've been working towards this moment your entire life. J.J. McCarthy with a milestone victory. No matter where you're headed, the journey to greatness starts here. Time to get the show started, Detroit. 519, welcome back. And again, if you missed it, RJ, happy birthday. Happy yes, birthday. guys. Uh, it, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, Justin texted me yesterday. He said that you guys were that close to FaceTiming me yes. at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes. That is not true. I, I, I don't know where you heard that. Um, I need to go back to the tape. Uh -huh. Check the replay. Yeah, we did. We did. That's what we friends did. are for. We were, we were going to do that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. we didn't. So that would have well, been an adventure. Well, sure. the, the best part of that is we almost gave out your phone number on the air. Oh, yeah. So oh, everybody okay. else can wish you. Happy birthday as well. I guess there's a silver lining in that. There, there, too. there is. No number Steph, getting out. Steph was the voice of reason as always said, don't text him. <laughs> it's yeah. like, let him sleep. Also <laughs> true. That would have been fun. All right, guys, uh, not fun. Hey, you know what? Construction uh, continues here for all of our folks out there in the north side of town as we take a look here. 1604. Westbound here at Hebner Road. Uh, this was supposed to wrap up by five o'clock this morning. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, this construction that all of our folks out there are going to see for the rest of this week during the overnight hours. I heard a lot of
of horror stories over the weekend about all the mess out there with the 1604 I-10 interchange. So we'll, throughout the week, give you more details on what exactly is going to go on there for the rest of the month. And uh, yeah, just expect uh, for a little bit more of, uh, of those closures out there throughout uh, the rest of the month. But right now, we are dealing with this situation here, westbound lane 1604 at Hebner Road. We'll show you a little bit more here in just a bit. I-10 eastbound, we still have that crash being reported there on the east side of town at the Loop 410, that uh, interchange right there. So it looks like uh, traffic is still getting through this area. A little bit of a slowdown for all of our folks coming in from the northbound lanes of 410 that are getting onto I-10 right now. It's going to be affecting some of our traffic there to Ackerman. We also have a stalled vehicle being reported right there in North WW White Road. All right, onto this ongoing construction that we've been seeing here. Um, Again, this was supposed to wrap up by 5 o'clock this morning. So basically, TxDOT will be closing the westbound lanes of uh, 1604 in the overnight hours through this Saturday, so through April 20th. But this is a pretty big closure here because we are basically going all the way from 281 to I-10, basically the westbound lanes all the way from Blanco Road, plus, past Northwest Military, all the way past Vance Jackson Road to the I-10 at 1604 interchange. That's going to be closed for, uh, they're doing some repavement in that area and just a lot of different things taking place as part of that expansion project. So we will continue to monitor when they pick up uh, construction there tonight. Again, ongoing there, rest of the week, 9 o'clock at night to 5 a.m. The rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good. Even we're getting traffic through our construction there on the northeast side, so that's good news. Again, this is kind of our biggest issue at the moment right now. Mike, how are things uh, looking outside this morning? Boy, if you like the humidity. Oh, hey, got a metal giveaway to tell you about. It is going to be this evening, and that's at 6705 Northwest Loop 410 near Ingram at Pickup Fitness. And the man, the myth, the legend, Justin Horn. And I, who are you going to say? No, 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 him and, and then me are going to be out there. And look at that. It's the uh, the weather medal out there, Fiesta weather medal, with the picture of all five of us. So, I mean, call it Sarah, Mia, and the Three Stooges or something like that. So, on the, the pictures That's on there. That's exactly what it's called. I'm, I'm, I've never had my face on a Fiesta medal before. I'm, How about that? That is awesome. No, I'm good, I love seeing the team. with those other four. So, yeah. anyway, yeah, come on out and, uh, and say hi. That's going to be later on this afternoon. All right, this was from a couple of days ago. What a beautiful picture there. Looking out at Woodlawn Lake and a couple of clouds hanging around. Need to be in that lake because it's going to be and very humid all just about all week long. Weekend, different situation. And you can sort of see all that the low cloud, the humidity hanging around there, that fuzzy look to the skyline. A couple of leftover showers up in northern counties, and you can see those have all but fizzled on out. Just a few leftovers there. They will continue to work their way off to the northeast. On the heels of that, we've got a little bit of fog out there right around Kerrville, Rock Springs as well, heading out 10 elsewhere. It's not bad because of a little bit of a breeze. Now, as far as the humidity, there is a somewhat of a front which is trying to work its way into the hill country. So dew points are really going to be dropping off around Del Rio, Rock Springs, Junction. And this is by later on this evening. Then it just turns around and goes back the other direction. So for the rest of us, no, it's just going to stay very, very humid around here. And like I said, that's going to be the case throughout the rest of the week. There's that leftover little sprinkle there, that 10% chance. A couple of peaks of sunshine here and there, but again, a fair amount of clouds already up to 80 at noon. That's the normal high temperature. We end up at 86 later on today. And as far as cloud cover, satellite picture right now, all of those clouds continue to come on in here from the south and west. Big, huge storm system here. That's continuing to, to pull off to the east of us and then in behind it, it's it's going to be sort of, you know, so so kind of weather, if you will, where we're just going to have a lot of humidity around here. Nothing really to write home about except for that. But go into Thursday and we do have a chance for a few showers, thunderstorms. Now, as of right now, it is looking like, first of all, broad brush, long range computer model looking like it's going to hold off until after all the Fiesta Fiesta activities. But then some of those will extend overnight into Friday, jump ahead very quickly into Saturday and that's going to be the better chance or the best chance for some rain. Saturday right now is looking to be on the wet side, unfortunately for Fiesta activities, but we definitely can use some of that rain. Quick check on Thursday. Right now, Storm Prediction Center does have us in the small risk for one of those stronger storms. But again, uh, rain chances are not that great until late, late Thursday night. But if anything does pop, could be on the strong, potentially severe side. Obviously, we're going to continue to monitor that. 88 tomorrow, 90 on Thursday. Hot, humid all the way through Friday. Wet Saturday and cooler temperatures. Sunday looks great. River Parade looks fantastic on Monday. More after this.
In today's Tech Bytes, Apple has been unseated by Samsung as the world's top phone maker. Samsung reclaimed the top spot as iPhone shipments dropped about 10% in the first three months of 2024. Samsung accounted for nearly 21% of the global market, while Apple claimed just over 17%. If you're new to the site formerly known as Twitter, get ready to pay to post. Ex-chairman Elon Musk says he wants to charge a small fee for new users, which he says will go away after three months. Musk said the move is the only way to, quote, curb the relentless onslaught of bots. Finally, IKEA has developed a furniture line aimed at gamers. The 20 items include chairs, a desk, and several storage options. An IKEA developer says the line embraces the idea that gaming can happen anywhere in the home. No pricing yet. The pieces go on sale in September. I don't know if I'm ready to get rid of my chair for one of these. Me and my recliner go way back. Those are your tech bites. <laughs> it, it never ends. I like that, though. That's a good one. That was cute. Time now, 528 and 72 degrees for now. Just ahead, how you can help honor our heroes this upcoming Memorial Day at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. And ahead on GMSA at 6, a wildlife center in San Antonio is struggling as they care for hundreds of animals. Why they're trying to get the word out about which animals you should bring in. So, what's happening? Everybody okay? Just, just uh, hanging out on, like, so. on a Tuesday. It was, when it comes on, I'm supposed to say, good morning, not so. <laughs> That's true. Good morning, good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is April 16th. Now you can say. Yes. So, what's going on? <laughs> uh, very warm and humid out there. Now that we got that straight, uh, we've got, yeah, just, it's darn muggy. I mean, it, you walk outside and it kind of, Kind of hits you in the face just a little bit. Not a bad view over there by 10 at 410. Traffic's moving along very well. You can see all the clouds in the background as well. And we're going to keep a fair amount of clouds around today. Maybe you know, a couple of peaks of sunshine thrown on in here and here and there. 72 degrees. The average normal low temperature is still 58. So anywhere from 10 to 15 above that across the board. Dew point stands at 67. When you get up in the, you know, 73, 4 degree range for dew point temperatures. That's really that wet towel kind of humidity. So, no, it's not that that humid out there, but it's going to stay very humid, especially in the afternoons. You walk outside and you notice it. We do have a few leftover sprinkly showers up in the uh, hill country. Those have all but fizzled on out. A little bit of fog up there around Kerrville, Rock Springs. Uh, and that's because you don't have much of a breeze up there. We do have a decent breeze coming in here out of the southeast here in town, and that's just continuing to pull in all of the, uh, the moisture. Remember yesterday morning when it was just about 10 and 90 was sort of the dividing line. There were upper 60s kind of split in hairs north of that and then 70s south. Notice how the 70s continue to kind of invade northward. It's just going to get hotter as time goes on and all of the uh, humidity out there with the dew points well up into the, the 60s. Wind again, not much in the hill country. Nine miles per hour here in town, 13 Hondo. So that's helping out, like I said, to prevent a lot of that fog from forming up. Mold is uh, on the moderate side. Same thing with oak, although it is continuing to come down. A little bit of pe uh, pecan and grass are showing up. 80 at noon, 86 high temperature today. Yeah, it's going to be a steamy one. Same thing tomorrow and Thursday for the start of Fiesta. Plus, we're going to talk about some rain chances. Just a few scattered ones here and there, and then a better chance of rain over the weekend, along with that front we're talking about. What's that mean for next week? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, what's cooking, sir? All right, Mike, yeah, cannot wait uh, for Fiesta to get started here, but let's get you out and about here on your Tuesday morning. I-35, 37, downtown area. Traffic moving pretty good, both directions right there. Same situation here as well. Well, 35 at Leon Creek, and let's see, if we get one more here. 410 at West Military Drive. Do you see uh, not too many people on the roads? Do expect that to change here over the next hour or so? We still have this stalled vehicle being reported. I-10 westbound at WW White for all of our folks on the east side of town. Uh, good news, we have cleared out that uh, crash that was being reported a little bit on I-10 eastbound, a little bit uh, past 410 in that area. So that has been cleared out. What has not been cleared out, has been kind of keeping an eye on this, is some of this construction that's taking place on the north side of town. We have uh, six. 1604 westbound lanes that were closed during the overnight hours. Again, they were expected to pick up this construction around 5 o'clock uh, this morning, and basically they have closed down the uh, 1604 all the way from Blanco Road, basically to Vance Jackson, past Vance Jackson, to the I-10 area. So it's affecting all of our folks there in the Chavano Park area. But again, it looks like they maybe are in the process of letting some folks through here in that area right now. Everything else looking pretty good across the city of San Antonio. Traffic moving pretty well, but again, do expect things to kind 
kind of pick up here in just a little bit. Let's give you another look here. 1604 westbound Hebner Road. So we are seeing some traffic starting to get through this area, but we still see some emergency crews out there and some emergency vehicles. So be careful if you are headed out in that part of the north side. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. The trial of a woman accused of starving her five-year-old stepson to death is now in its second week. A Bear County jury could begin deliberations as early as today. Miranda Casares is accusing the death of Benjamin Cerveta. Earlier in the trial, the Bear County medical examiner testified Benjamin starved to death, but the defense argued against that claim. Casares's attorney called a former medical examiner out of Florida to the stand. He says after looking at the report, Benjamin had no signs of starvation. If found guilty, Casares faces up to life in prison. San Antonio Animal Care Services investigating after a monkey bit an 11 year old boy at a family gathering. Now, according to ACS, that monkey that bit the child is called a vervet monkey. Now, ACS says they grow to be medium to large sized. Investigators tell us that the monkey bit the little boy on the right ear. Now, in case you didn't know, it is illegal to own monkeys or other primates in San Antonio, and that's one of the things the owner was cited for, along with the bite and for having no proof of vaccination. Officials tell us that monkey bites can carry a risk of diseases like rabies or even HIV. ACS has the monkey right now, and we have not been updated on the boy's condition. Other headlines this morning. Donald Trump returns to a New York courtroom today as a judge works to find a panel of jurors who will decide whether the former president is guilty of criminal charges. He's accused of falsifying business records to cover up a sex scandal during the 2016 campaign. The first day of selection ended with no one being chosen to be on the panel. Dozens were dismissed after saying they didn't believe they could be fair and impartial. It's the first of Trump's four criminal cases to go to trial. It also may be the only one that could reach a verdict before voters decide the presidential race in November and whether he should return to the White House. The Justice Department is expected to file an antitrust lawsuit against Live Nation Entertainment as soon as next month. Live Nation subsidiary Ticketmaster was widely criticized for its handling of Taylor Swift's Eras Tour back in 2022. Now, the Wall Street Journal says that the Justice Department lawsuit is expected to claim that Live Nation has leveraged its commanding share of the live event ticketing market in a way that undermines competition. During a hearing last year, U.S. Senators criticized Live Nation's lack of transparency, fee structure, and inability to block bot purchases of tickets. Well, a new bill to ban TikTok could be up for a House vote this week, and it's different than the one the chamber passed last month. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, this time the ban is part of a set of four separate bills that could make the ban harder for the Senate to ignore. We won't be voting on the Senate supplemental. Instead, House Speaker Mike Johnson says he hopes to pass four separate bills this week. Three have aid for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. Sources say the fourth includes a ban on TikTok. That has some of the things with regard to the uh, loan lease uh, option and the, uh, the Repo Act and, and some other sanctions on Iran and, and other measures that we've been talking about here for quite some time. The Senate has yet to take up a different TikTok bill. The House passed with strong bipartisan support last month. It would ban the platform from U.S. app stores unless it spun off from its Chinese parent company. Supporters of that measure say TikTok is a national security risk. We cannot rule out that the CCP could use it. TikTok says about 170 million Americans use the platform. Banning it faces opposition. You are voting against my small business. You are voting against me getting a slice of my American pie. This is where um, entertainment happens. This is where they, the commentary and analysis of entertainment world happens. This is where education happens. The House bills could hold some appeal for Democrats. They've been trying to pass foreign aid for months. But the White House prefers a Senate package that does not ban TikTok. What we want to see is that bipartisan national security supplemental that passed overwhelmingly in 70-29 in the Senate. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Here at home, a San Antonio nonprofit is in need of a thousand volunteers to help place miniature flags at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. The president of the Flags for Fallen Vets tells us they have around 2,000 volunteers so far, but they need more to put out an estimated 140,000 flags at the cemetery. So if you do want to volunteer, just email flag for, flag for fallen vets at yahoo.com. Make sure your email includes Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery, your name, and how many people will help you. The flag placement will take place on May 26th at 9 a.m. 
KSAP Metal Days are back. You can grab a free KSAP Metal at various locations around the San Antonio area. We have a brand new spot for you to visit today, and we will reveal that location coming up later this morning right here on Good Morning San Antonio. And fun fact, KSAT has five different kinds of metals for you to collect this year. Check out this story on KSAT.com for more details. And I do like that we have the entire weather team on the weather. I do too. Metal. I do too. And Mike, you are on there, right? Last I looked, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Although it's one of those, if you dip it in hot water, I think my face does. Oh, <laughs> only you. <very> clever. <laughs> only Mike. Very clever. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Time now is 540 and 72 degrees for now. Outside with live cam. See how things are looking out there right now. Muggy, 72 degrees, uh, but there is some cooler weather on the way. Mike will tell you when we could have some of that in South Central Texas. You're watching DMSA. Welcome back. It's 544. Well, April is Autism Acceptance Month or Autism Awareness Month. And later today, we're going to be hosting a Quesa Community Town Hall in honor of that. Our Tiffany Huertas will be joined by members from Any Baby Can to answer any questions you may have. You can join us this afternoon at 2 for the town hall on KSAT.com or any of our streaming devices. Then on Saturday, you can be a part of the 20th Annual Walk for Autism at Palo Alto College. We have a link to register for the walk on our website in the KSAT community section. All right, here's a question for you early risers. How do you like to ride in a fiesta parade? Get your phone handy and scan the QR code on your screen. Then tell us what you love about Battle of Flowers and a chance to enter the ride on a float to show us your shoes, which is tradition. <laughs> Battle of Flowers Parade is Friday, April 26th. And once you enter the contest and register to become a KSAT Insider, which we highly recommend, you can access our KSAT Fiesta parties. So scan this QR code. From there, you can buy tickets for our Insider Fiesta parties at the day and night parades. You can find all this information right now at KSAT.com. I know we spend a lot of the morning, if your family wakes up and you're constantly doing this to the TV, <laughs> We understand. We understand. I mean, there are a lot of Fiesta events, a lot of different QR codes. But again, just check our website just in case you missed it. We're trying to help you out. 545, 72 degrees. Look out there with Transguide. Looking over at I-10, looking pretty good. Also, Loop 1604 at Hebner. Things are moving now. We're going to get a check back with RJ Marcus in just a minute. 549 right now. Hopefully you guys are having a good Tuesday morning. If you're about to hit the roads right now, things are looking pretty good for the most part across the city of San Antonio and the surrounding areas. We take a look here that uh, construction been cleared out there 1604 West at uh, Hebner Road. Again, construction there going on throughout uh, the rest of this week during the overnight hours, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. from Blanco Road all the way to I-10. But again, things looking pretty good out there right now for all of our folks in the north side. We'll take it after uh, after that crazy weekend. Uh, we do have a crash being reported on the west side of town, Petranco at Culebra Roads, uh, off the highway, but still a pretty important intersection. A lot of people out there use their Culebra and Petranco on the west side of town. Let's take you all the way to the east side now, where we still have this stalled vehicle being reported I-10 westbound at uh, WW White Road, not causing too many delays right now at the moment, and we have cleared out that crash from earlier there at 410 and I-10. The rest of the city, everything else, again, looking pretty good. Our map's indicating only those two incidents right there, so we will definitely take it. Let's get you back on the rotating shot here 37 at Alamo Dome. Traffic moving pretty good both directions right there in the southeast parts of the town. Let's see, we get a few more here. We have uh, Vance Jackson, I 10 on northwest side. Traffic moving pretty good, guys. Things looking good. Thank you, mm -hmm. sir. It's good news for Tuesday morning. Yep. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, maybe if you can make the humidity go away, it would be a perfect Tuesday. <laughs> uh, well, not today, but by the end of the weekend, we will have lower humidity. So nice. Sunday's looking great. Monday for the River Parade looks fantastic. Nice. First of all, yes. you want a chance to grab a KSAT Weather Authority metal? 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 Metal. Yeah, that too. Yeah. You can grab one later on today. We are hosting a giveaway today at Pickup Fitness. Justin and I are going to be there. I don't know if we're going to be in matching shirts or not. We'll have to work that Let's out. Hope so. You, 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 <laughs> Do you want the matching? Is it is that little goofy looking? No, no. Or it's or it's colors, team so. teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah, teamwork with matching outfits. I you like know, it. teamwork, Mike. 
Makes well, the dream work. he should be here shortly if you want to talk to him about that, and we'll figure that out. Okay. So. It looks like anyway. it's a basketball court or but, some pick up basketball, oh, maybe. That's kind of what Did Jersey? Justin pick this spot? I don't. Really? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what the only thing. Like. I don't know. I've never yeah. been. So what, he's going to go out there and start it. dunking on me? Um, no. <laughs> he's pretty competitive, Mike. I, I know. <laughs> I could never make the basketball team school. Anyway, that's long stories. Uh, head on out there, located at uh, Northwest uh, Loop 410 near Ingram Road. So come on out later on today. And of course, we are going to be live on the air as well. All right, Peggy, another shot of the uh, birds getting a little bit of a, a drink there. Some of the hummingbirds. Thank you very much for that. And out there at 10 at 410, traffic's moving along very well. It's just kind of murky looking. We've got a lot of low clouds, a ton of humidity, some fog out in Kerrville. Visibility has dropped a little bit more. Uh, same thing around Castroville right now. We do have a decent breeze, which is helping to prevent a lot of widespread fog, despite the fact we have all of this, uh, this humidity out there. A couple leftover little sprinkly showers up to the north. That's why that 10% chance right there. And that's going to be this morning. There's one or two of them up there in the hill country. Those are dying off, though. A little bit of sunshine thrown in with the clouds today. It's going to be steamy. So again, in answer to Stephanie's question, no, can't get rid of the humidity today. It's definitely going to be sticking around 86 high temperature, normal high 80. Again, normal low is 58, but we're in the 70s right now. So way above normal and the humidity sticks around. Sorry, Steph, all the way through the week, all the way through the start of Fiesta. But notice by Sunday, it does tend to drop off. We've got a front moving through here on Saturday. What that's going to do, though, is give us a chance for some rain. We also have a chance for some rain on Thursday, but it's looking promising. Now, this is by 10 o'clock Thursday night. And again, broad brush. Doesn't mean this is where all of the rain is going to be or all the rain is going to be in these spots, but the chances for some rain. And there's the potential, especially up to the north, for a couple of stronger storms later on Thursday. But right now, the odds are in our favor that we get all the Fiesta Fiesta activities out of the way prior to that rain moving on in here. We'll have some showers overnight. Then we got to jump ahead to Saturday, and that's going to be the next big chance for some rain around here, uh, as especially later on in the day as that front starts to lie across the area Saturday night and then into early Sunday as well. Again, back to Thursday, there is the chance for one or two of those storms to be on the potentially strong to severe side. Obviously, we're going to continue to monitor that situation, but again, it's looking right now like it'd be further to the north, and then the odds of rain are not that great as of right now. Today, 86, 88 tomorrow, 90 on Thursday, and hot and steamy all the way through Friday. The front moves through during the day on Saturday, some rain, and then we clear on out. And again, Sunday looks very nice, especially in the afternoon, and Monday looks very nice for the, uh, the river parade right now. Really pleasant temperatures, but again, maybe kind of on the coolish side going into Monday evening. More after this. Stick around. Good morning. It's great to be with you here on a Tuesday. We are following former President Trump's criminal trial in New York. He is back in court this morning for jury selection. We'll get the reaction from inside and out of the courtroom after day one. Plus, we've got a lot of weather to talk about. We had some damaging winds, nearly 100 severe storm reports just yesterday from the plains to the mid-Atlantic. But today, it's all about Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois. We've got an up updated tornado threat to share with you. And what to do if you missed yesterday's tax deadline and what it could mean for your refund. Plus, Caitlin Clark is here live. She was the number one overall pick in last night's WNBA draft. And she's talking about her big moment with all of us. If you like food, this one's for you. There's another big event to prepare for after Fiesta, the Texas Eats Food Festival. It's Saturday, May 11th at Smoke Barbecue east of downtown. Scan the QR code on your screen for ticket information and to see the full lineup of James Beard nominated chefs from our area. It's a pretty impressive lineup. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA search continues for a 19 year old who vanished on Canyon Lake. What we've been able to learn from the Comal County Sheriff's Office, plus a wildlife center in San Antonio struggling to care for hundreds of animals. What they're saying about which animals people should and should not try to bring in. And up next, Patty Santos spoke with people who live in communities that police say have lower crime. Why they're telling her that's not reality for them. And checking Trans Sky. Traffic is building at 10 and Vance Jackson westbound, actually in both directions. And there's 35 at Benton City Road. You're watching GMSA.